And first up on this edition of the news, we are getting you more breaking updates of what possibly has happened in the Nitish Kumar Manju Verma case. Remember, just about yesterday, Nitish Kumar, the chief minister, was forced to sack Minister Manju Verma, under whom mass rape of 34 children happened for days. And why we say this is because, remember, she was a social welfare minister. Today, we get you the real story behind that sacking. Manju Verma, who claims that she quit on moral grounds, was indeed asked to go. She was sacked. Our colleague Prakash, remember, has been getting us all those uh, details. Uh, and I think he's just going to join us live in a bit to get you that inside track. But we are revealing here on Republic, step by step, a blow by blow account of what possibly has happened in that meeting that happened uh, between uh, Nitish Kumar and Manju Verma, my colleagues Piyush and uh, Prakash, who've been fronting all investigations into that story, are live with us on the broadcast now. And I'll take it first to you, Prakash, for the longest time. For the longest time, people were asking Nitish Kumar that why does he not sack Manju Verma? He doesn't go with all those demands. He does not believe that that is a step he needs to take. It's yesterday, that meeting that happened between him and Manju Verma, that finally leads to the sacking of this mantri. But she's been telling us that I have given you my own advice. We have never said that we have given you my own advice. Well, Deepthi, this all started the day before yesterday when we broke that story of 17 calls that were made between Manju Burma's husband and Rajesh Thakur in the intervening period of January 18 and May 2018. And on the basis of tower dump, nine visits were made to Muzaffarpur by Manju Burma's husband. And thereafter, yesterday, when Rajesh Thakur also confessed that he did speak to Manju Burma's husband a couple of times, on political issues, not on business interests. And thereafter, uh, the CDR details were analyzed by Nitish's government. It was happening for, the, uh, for many days. And I had told you in my broadcast with you earlier on a couple of occasions that uh, it is not that uh, the government is sitting on it. The government will certainly take a decision as we ha I have been following Nitish Kumar's political career for more than 15 years now. And, uh, I was pretty sure that some action would be taken. But having said that, after that, three Kuswaha MLAs were sent to Manju Verma's residence to placate her, to ask her to resign, but she was hellbent on not resigning. And thereafter, all those three Kuswaha MLAs who belong to Manju Verma's community brought back, uh, brought Manju Verma to the CM residence, and there were the, uh, in the presence of the core committee members of the JDU, which included three. Uh, JDU ministers, Vijendra Yadav, Lalan Singh, and one uh, uh, Kuswaha minister, Krishnandan Burma. And after that, Nitish offered Manju Burma to resign. But she was hell-bent that on what ground she, uh, uh, she should resign because there are no allegations against her, there are no direct evidence against her. And she said that she needs to see the uh, call detail analysis of uh, her husband as well as... But in fact, what we are told is that she, her conduct was not proper in the presence of minister with Nitish and Nitish got furious and so was Manju Burma. And thereafter, Nitish Kumar in fact told her, if you don't resign, I will be left with no option but to send your sacking letter to the governor and I will re recommend that you be sacked from the ministry. And thereafter, and after enough counselling by the senior ministers who were present in the meeting, Manju Burma decided to budge and she offered to quit on moral ground. And thereafter, all uh, we, we saw what okay. happened during the press conference yesterday. So, in fact... Nitish